from Catskill, New York. Weighing 221 and one quarter pounds. He is undefeated with 26 wins, 24 of those wins by the KO route. He is rated number one by the WBA. Here is the dynamic Mike Tyson. The most expensive heavyweight fighter, the strongest puncher, the best in many other ways. So right, count right hand by Mike Tyson is invited. And there was an uppercut. In this video, we're going to recall the 15 best knockouts performed by Tyson and enjoy every moment. Mike learned his signature style, characterized by its speed and explosive sharp blows from Cus D'Amato. This style manifested itself from the beginning of Mike's professional career and was especially evident in the 15 most powerful knockout blows he delivered. One of his early fights is no exception, his bout with Marvis Frazier in 1986. At that time, Marvis was a promising boxer with a record of 16 and one. Everyone expected a legendary spectacle from the fight. Tyson moved his opponent into a corner and delivered a right uppercut, followed by a series of five powerful blows. Frazier falls and the referee starts counting. Only 30 seconds have passed from the start of the fight and Marvis was unconscious. The referee stops counting. It took several minutes for Frazier to come to his senses. It's not without good reason that this hard knockout is called one of the most spectacular in Iron Mike's career. Give me first your reaction to the fight. Oh, the fight, I was confident. I trained real hard with my trainer, Kevin Rooney, who I owe a great deal to. And I came out and I was confident. I came out, I knew the fight. I felt the deep in my heart, I was gonna stop him in the first round. Did you know from watching tapes of him that you could hit him with the uppercut? No, that, that's my favorite punch. Um, and, I, and I watched the time and I knew from my trainer telling me as he throws his punches, he's bent down. And I knew that would be perfect for my uppercut. I planned on working the body more, but I saw the opportunity and it looked too good to go away. In September 1986, Mike Tyson entered the ring against Alfonso Ratliff. The fight against Alfonso was the last before Mike's first championship title fight with Trevor Burbick. Tyson quickly figured out his rival, demonstrating the brilliant technique that distinguished him from his early years in the professional ring. After waiting a moment, Mike dodges to the left and throws a powerful left hook into Ratliff's jaw. Alfonso falls to the floor. He gets up on one knee and waits until the referee counts to nine before he stands. Mike rushes to finish the fight and shoots a series of eight hits. Ratliff barely escapes in the clinch. After the referee separates the fighters, Tyson begins beating Ratliff near the ropes and ends up finishing him in the second round. Davey Pearl looking very closely. And that's all. It's over. The bicycle had a flat tire. Tyson's strength is both impressive and terrifying. Our next example is the fight with Trevor Burbeck in November of 86. At that time, Trevor was the reigning heavyweight champion of the world. At the end of the first round, Burbeck is on the verge of a knockout. He has already missed several incoming hard punches, but is still on his feet. At the beginning of the second round, Tyson knocks him down and continues the attack with an uppercut to the jaw, then a left hook to the head. Burbeck tries three times to get up, but keeps falling back to the floor. The referee stops the fight. The result is a technical knockout, making Tyson the youngest world heavyweight champion. Iron Mike is famous for the brutal power he used against his opponents. In the fight with Pinklin Thomas on May 30th, 1987, this was especially noticeable. By this time, Pinklin had only one loss on his record to Trevor Burbeck, who was defeated by Tyson earlier. 
the fight began with an explosion of side hits from Mike, but Pinklin resisted. Thomas lasted until the sixth round when Tyson threw a devastating series of uppercuts and hooks with both hands, dropping Thomas to the canvas. It was a brutal and absolute victory. In his autobiography, Tyson later said that he hit Pinklin with everything he had, not caring what would happen to him. Once and for all was the title listed on the posters about the fateful fight of the two undefeated heavyweight champions, Michael Spinks and Mike Tyson. In 1988, this was perhaps the most important event in the world of professional boxing. Tickets cost more than $1,500, and such celebrities as Madonna, Oprah Winfrey, and Sylvester Stallone came to see the spectacle. The hall was full of stars. In the middle of the first round, Tyson throws an uppercut to the chin using a right hook. Spinks falls. The referee counts to three, and he rises. A powerful left-right combination to the head, and Spinks again is lying on the canvas. 91 seconds into round one, and the fight is over. The fight became not only known for its short duration, but also for the staggering fees paid to the boxers, $22 million and $13.5 million. The Ring magazine named this one-round fight the fight of the year. As a champion and as a winner was to try to fight back. Many of Tyson's opponents were knocked out for the first time in fights with him. The same happened in the fight with another boxing icon, Larry Holmes. Before the start of the fight, Holmes insulted Tyson several times, and this did not set well with Tyson. During the fight, Iron Mike showed animal aggression in all its glory. The fight ended in the fourth round, delivering an extremely humiliating defeat for Holmes, who was knocked down three times. In the end, after the knockout, Larry had an episode of fainting and shock. He needed a doctor to get up. Larry Holmes subsequently considered this fight his only defeat and called Tyson a real champion. The Hard Way Back was the name given to Tyson's fight with Alex Stewart. After suffering a defeat in the fight with Buster Douglas, losing his title and damaging his reputation, Tyson actively tried to restore both, and he succeeded. Ten seconds into the fight and Stewart was knocked down with two speedy right punches. He got up on the count of five and was knocked down again about a minute in. A quick left hook at two and a half minutes marked the third knockdown. With this, Tyson won by a technical knockout. Another brilliant victory on his way back to the top. Well, Stewart said that Tyson was a mountain. He had a climb. He just got knocked off that mountain. He just didn't have the style, Jim, unlike Douglas to test the vulnerability of Tyson. Yeah, he's not nearly the technician that Douglas was when Douglas was good. In yeah, Tokyo. early in the... August 1995, Tyson's fighting style had changed. His peekaboo style was replaced with a stronger punch and attack and more caution on approach and defense. His first successful fight after prison was with Buster Mathis Jr., an undefeated boxer at the time. The start of the fight was rather slow, 
Buster successfully evaded punches and used dodge and clinch tactics for the first two rounds. Despite this, the third round was completed with a series of the strongest uppercuts from Tyson. Mathis fell to the canvas. The referee counted to 10, a victory by knockout for Tyson. Mike, did you, did you expect him to come straight at you the way he did? Did you expect him to try and crowd you and walk into your I power? Expect, I expect him to do um, many things. I expect him to move around, run because he's able to do that, and I expect him um, to smother me because he's been very successful. But I'm very familiar with his style of fighting. I was raised, and I'm the best at that style of fighting. I knew every move he was making. That's how come when I, when I did a couple of particular moves, he was, he was stunned. He didn't expect them. In September 1996, Tyson's fight with Bruce Seldon was one of the shortest heavyweight title fights in boxing history, lasting only 1 minute and 49 seconds. Tyson immediately attacked aggressively. Seldon tried to throw a flurry of left jab punches and used his signature tactics, but Tyson easily dodged the attack. In the middle of the round, Seldon was knocked down with a left hook, followed immediately by a straight right. The boxer got up to the count of eight and continued the fight, but was again knocked down by a left hook. Bruce got back to his feet but lost his balance. Referee Richard Steele stopped the fight and awarded Tyson the win by TKO, making him a three-time world heavyweight champion. The end of the 90s was not an easy time for Tyson. After a stint in prison and the revocation of his boxing license due to the fight with Holyfield, the frequency of his fights changed. About once every six months, he held fights with high-ranking athletes. One of these fights was with Francois Botha. Mike had been preparing for only a month and a half, apparently underestimating his opponent. Botha had the advantage during the first four rounds and led over Tyson, who seemed to be unsure of himself. Several times the fight went past the bell and the fighters had to be separated and points were detracted. Botha began to taunt Tyson, which angered him. Francois was sure of his victory until, in the fifth round, a short right blow from Tyson sent Botha to the canvas. A brilliant knockout turned the fight around. January 2000, Tyson fights in Europe against the champion of Great Britain, Julius Francis. The European public is sure of Francis's victory, with newspapers even paying huge sums to advertise on Francis's shoes. However, as is often the case with professional boxing, expectations do not always match reality. Julius fell twice during the first round. After a fifth fall, the referee stopped the fight in the second round. The fight ended with a knockout at 58 seconds in round two. In mid-2000, a fight with Lou Savarese took place, which left a mark in Tyson's record as one of the fastest in his career. By my instructions, check hands, Good luck to you both. This is where Iron Mike's famous aggression came into play. 
The fight began with a powerful hook from Tyson, with which he knocked Lou down. Lou got up, but Mike rushed to finish him off. The referee tried to stop the fight, but Tyson got so carried away that he hit the referee in the back of the head. The fighters were separated, and Tyson was awarded victory by a technical knockout. Everyone expected the fight with Polish boxer Andrew Golota to be aggressive, since both fighters were known for rough tactics. Golota was known for low blows, and Tyson for fighting after the bell. Tyson started the fight with his characteristic aggression. Golota made good use of the left jab and his height advantage. In the last 30 seconds, Tyson threw several strong punches, one of which hit the target. Next, another powerful right cross, and Golota was on the floor, bleeding from a cut over his left eye. After the first round, Golota twice asked his trainer to stop the fight. Between the second and third rounds, Golota told his corner that he would not continue and began walking around the ring. Despite the encouragement of his coach and attendants, Golota refused to continue the fight. After the third bell, the referee raised Tyson's hand, a technical knockout. Spectators would remember this spectacle for a long time. October 2001, another fight outside the U.S. The fight was with the Danish fighter Brian Nielsen, who was known as one of the dirtiest fighters. 25,000 spectators came to watch this fight. From the first round, Nielsen was under a hail of blows from Tyson. In the third round, Tyson hit Nielsen below the belt, clearly causing him great pain. The fight resumed, but the situation did not change. And after the sixth round, Nielsen refused to continue the fight. An impressive fee of 13 million and a technical knockout again went to Iron Mike. The last knockout in Tyson's professional career was in a fight with Clifford Etienne on February 22, 2003. Etienne at the time was one of the most spectacular boxers of the early 2000s, according to The Ring. There were rumors about Tyson's poor physical fitness, and reporters were constantly looking for new gossip. The fight was one of the shortest held by Tyson. After a rather slow start, he threw a right hook that knocked Clifford to the floor. The referee counted to 10, but Etienne was still on the floor. At 49 seconds of the first round, Etienne was knocked out, concluding Mike's legendary knockouts. Mike Tyson! Tyson is an impressive and intimidating fighter. He received the title of the cruelest fighter for a reason, and it's easy to see why after what we have witnessed today. What do you think of the boxing legend? Please let us know in the comments, and don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. See you next time in the ring.